Good morning, people. Welcome. Uh, I'm. Uh, let me get this out of the bag uh, to begin with. I mistakenly called yesterday's Art Talk at the end, episode 257. It wasn't. It was 256. Today is 257, and I'm going to drink to that because I can't. What's up, Chris? Here's to you, buddy. And Tim McDougal, here's to you. Stop coming in for a second so I can swig some coffee. Mm. That's hot. That's hot. What's up, gentlemen? Thank you for joining me today on this. Um, you know, uh, there are countries that are called um, uh, first world countries. There's countries that are called third world countries. I don't know about second world, but I think that we are currently in the fourth world countries right now. Um, practicing our, um, <laughs> whatever, uh, our social distancing. Uh, someone came up with that term. Uh, they should get a penny for everybody that uses it. Uh, that would be a, an amazing deal. Uh, you know what, you know what I mean? Hey now, Timbo. Good to see you. Craig Casey, what's up? Good to see you. Loretta Smith, good morning. Good to see you guys. Let's see. Uh, okay, uh, episode 257, uh, this is Art Talk, I'm Fireball, and we do this every weekday morning, uh, except for the other morning, I missed. Uh, most weekday mornings um, uh, here from in Malibu, California, 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And uh, and Art Talk is strategically uh, designed to help you guys be creative, especially now. Um, now is an opportunity to really be creative in a, in a fun sort of way. Uh, there's a lot of things that you don't have to do right now. A lot of things that you can't do, like you can't go to a car show. Uh, so what do you do with your time? Lisa Acosta and uh, Ivan Shriver, uh, good morning. What do you do with your time? Uh, so um, uh, I'm going to give you a little idea of what I'm doing with my time and what Kathy's doing with her time. And then uh, we're going to talk about your time, uh -huh, Mike Levy. So uh, first off, I wanted to give you guys a couple of things. Uh, first of all, book of the day, Mustang coloring book. If you guys uh, know uh, my company's Fireball Publishing, as you know, uh, most people do. Derek Billinger. Good morning, Mark Green. Here's a Mad Max Mustang. That's pretty fun. Be kind of fun to color. Uh, you know, Mad Max, which I guess that's him up there. Um, he didn't have a Mustang. He did have a Ford, though, right? I mean, I guess, you know, kind of. An Australian Ford. And uh, um, you guys know what the background is there, right? Yeah, Vasquez Rocks. That's a cool place. So I went and shot a vlog there, an episode with Ken and Kathy, and we 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 reshot a lot of the episodes of uh, of uh, the original Star Trek series. Uh, so if you go to FirewallTim.com and you type in Vasquez Rocks, you'll see the episode that we shot there. It was pretty funny. It was pretty hysterical because uh, it's it's like you're walking on the planet Vulcan or something like that. Although it wasn't Vulcan, it was the Gorn. I have a fly that's making his way around. Come here, you. Go somewhere else. I'm trying to shoot here. Sorry, interruption. Um, it's it's some of the, some of the people that are working on the show that are kind of in the background scene. Uh, so my time is spent, uh, uh, you know, uh, working on those books. And I said that I was going to not do another book for a little while, and I'm kind of getting that itch. Yes, Randy, the Gorn. That's right, getting the itch. So I might be starting another book soon. I want to show you a car that I drove in in uh, college. Uh, back then in Art Center, uh, Art Center College of Design, where I went to school, they uh, they brought in concept cars and they let the students drive them. <laughs> Big mistake. Big mistake. They thought it was a good idea to give a student a million-dollar concept car and let them go to town in it. Well, you know, I was very fortunate. I drove around with a friend of mine, uh, Al Palma, who's a, uh, a very well-known designer uh, nowadays. And uh, um, we didn't really uh, ruin anything. We got to drive a couple of really cool cars. Uh, but one one person took uh, this car after we took it. This is the the Nissan BE1. This is something that uh, Nissan came out with, and it was right hand drive. Yeah, and uh, it's it looks like it's left hand drive because everything is wonko except here and this. Yeah, this is Wonko. Anyway, so this is the car. And the funny thing about this is that we took this car and we drove through Malibu long before I moved into Malibu. This was 1987 or something like that. Check out those specs that I'm wearing and the do. I even had a beard back then. Such a stud. Yeah, don't think so. Whatever. Anyway, uh, uh, if you research the BE-1, that was a um, kind of an integral car for Nissan at the time. Hold on. 
uh, getting Instagrams and things like that. So, um, uh, but it was fun to drive because I'd never driven something that was, uh, that was right-hand drive and everything's backwards. You know, the shift is with your left, uh, but the clutch and gas is the same. Uh, but we drove all the way up into Oxnard and then back and then out to Pasadena. had a great time. And then the next person that take it, took it, took the car, didn't take, take, he, yeah, he took the car and he drove up to Angeles Crest Highway and then he rolled it. Yeah. Yeah. Crashed it. Uh, so needless to say, they did not allow us to drive cars anymore. It was a uh, an interesting time. Interesting time. Car of the day. Uh, I believe this is a 49, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, this is a 49 Merc, part of my collection. Um, uh, I love this car because this is one of uh, my friend Gene Winfield's favorite cars. Uh, 49 Merc, as you can see, if you were to chop and channel this thing, it would look just like something that, that Gene does. Uh, this this is made by uh, uh, Motor Max. Not a well-known die-cast company, but, uh, you know, it has that ability to... No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't do it. I thought if you rolled it backwards, it, it goes. It's not one of those. Um, but it's actually, you know, it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good looking die cast, you know. And then uh, the other die cast I wanted to show you, this is a, a Corvette that I did with Johnny Lightning uh, many years ago. You can still buy these on eBay uh, and a couple other places, but this was a, a design that I did for Johnny Lightning. And then this was the, the packaging for that car. So I had my own packaging and everything else, and we did, uh, I don't know, three or four cars, something like that. But this is the White Lightning series, which was kind of, uh, you, if you, this is the one that you wanted to get. This is the regular car that came out, and there was lots of these. And then rarely, Johnny Lightning would make very small amount, small batch of White Lightning and make the tires white. And those were the ones that were collectible and, and that you could, uh, uh, you know, instead of selling for, for $3, they sold for $4. You know, then you were really raking in the dough. It was like super huge. Uh, what's up, Cynthia? Good morning. Good to see your lovely face, although only a part of it in your little icon there. Rick Calgar, what's up? Uh, were you there at Art Center with John Saws? Yes, I was. Absolutely. Uh, uh, John and I are good friends. And uh, yes, he designed the Nissan Cube, did a great job. Uh, because that was, he actually, John's story is interesting too. He, um, he was, uh, I guess, having lunch and he was sketching on a napkin and he drew the, the, uh, the cube on the napkin and the head of Nissan, head of Nissan came up walking behind him and said, wait, what's that? And he goes, I was just doodling. And he goes, we should build that. And a year later, a year later to that date, the car was driving on the street. Interesting that, uh, that's how, how fast they can do things sometimes. Um, I, yeah, I got a cool, I have a very cool life. Absolutely. Craig, but you know what? So do you buddy. So do you, we all do. Um, you just got to learn to appreciate things in a way that um, is now is an opportunity to do that. Uh, my first time back since the madness hit. Looking forward to your positivity today. Uh, thank you, Tina. I appreciate so much that you're here to join us and hang out. Uh, Sydney's good to see you. All right, we're all kind of caught up. Uh, Nicholas Savard. Cool. Jack French. Oh, we got some new people. Thank you for joining us. Guys, this is Our Talk, episode 257. I am Fireball. My job, I uh, design vehicles and sets and props and all kinds of things for the movie industry, which is not happening right now. And uh, I also have coloring books like the Mustang coloring book. We have 32 books. They're all available on Amazon. Just hit fireball uh, coloring books and you get a bunch of stuff. But now we're spending some time, you know, I'm organizing. I'm doing a lot of scanning of artwork. I'm doing a lot of um, going through the closet and finding things that I can't believe I still hold on to. Uh, and... Um, uh, as well as uh, contemplating a new book. Uh, Kathy's doing a lot of reading, and we're both doing a lot of hiking. I think Kathy's reading um, uh, Celtic Empire by Clive Cussler right now, if you guys are a Cussler fan. She's, you know, she likes those because they're big, but they're not as big as the ones she normally reads, which are Michener books. <laughs> you know, you can spend half your life reading one rich, uh, one Michener book. That's how big they are. They're like, you know, I, I generally use them to keep things you know, propped open like concrete doors, you know, or uh, sometimes I will lift up my car if I need to change uh, the oil or something and I'll put a bunch of Michener books, you know, underneath and it kind of holds the car up. <laughs> um, what an amazing opportunity we are being given right now. Uh, and, and, I, and I know it sounds strange, so don't get on my case when I say this, but in a way, um, uh, certainly it's not good that people have died or that people are sick, but you can say thank you, Corona, in a way, uh, and by saying that, you know, now um, I can kind of uh, take, a, take a moment to contemplate 
uh, what the hell I'm doing, you know? And that's not just a moment. It's some, it's some time. Now, I know many of you maybe um, I feel like you're struggling, uh, but it's important not to recognize that it's a struggle, but to try to look at it through different eyeballs. Try to look at it like, here's an opportunity. Because a lot of people are, and a lot of people are going to benefit greatly from what's going on, both morally and immorally. You can't do anything about those people. They're going to take advantage of things. You know, this is the world. There's 9 billion people and everybody's going to do everything, right? There's going to be people out there that are kissing, people out there that are doing bad things. You can't do anything about that. But you can do something about your life. And that's why we're here. Uh, we're here to get shit done right there. That's about as perfect as I could, I could make it, even though I hit my finger on the thing over here. Can't see what that is, but uh, yeah, it's, that's our job. So um, and now's an opportunity to start your business if that's what you want, or to start a project, or to start something, start something, so you can get shit done and you can you can uh, get, when we get out of this, which we will, you made use of that time. You didn't waste it. You did something that was uh, enjoyable, that's something that, that can affect potentially the rest of your life. And that's what it is that we want to do here on Art Talk. We want to inspire you guys through tips, tricks, and tools, the three Ts, uh, to um, uh, improve your life creatively somehow. And, uh, uh, and that's what we're, we're scheduled to do on today's Art Talk, which is um, uh, stop being scared and get out there. Yeah. Now, you know, the, 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 world, the world mindset right now is social distancing. Stay away. Stay away from everybody because everybody's got something. You know, you go to the store and they, they got all these placard things that on the ground where it says, you know, start here, start here. And it's keeping six feet in between everybody. And, you know, I get it. I get it. Uh, uh, every, you know, there's a lot of people that are scared. There was probably, uh, in the store yesterday, there was probably half, maybe a little more than half people had, um, uh, masks on. Uh, and then some people go to the extreme. One guy was wearing a hazmat suit and a full on, you know, respirator breather thing, you know, like, like, um, like there was zombies walking through the store. Uh, and I find it interesting, not, not trying to be judgmental, but it's a clear indication that, that there's a lot of fear, a lot of fear and anxiety that you're going to catch something and, and, uh, and then you're going to, you know, end up in the, in the six feet under, right? So uh, I, I get that. that. That's a mindset for certain people. It's not some, a mindset that I share. Uh, and this is a choice. Uh, but I, you know, at the same time, I do respect those people. So I want, the only reason I'm practicing any kind of social distancing is for other people, is to make sure that they don't, uh, aren't intimidated by the fact that I get too close. Am I too close to you guys? <laughs> uh, so it, it, that's you know kind of kind of what it is. Uh, uh, Duke Sexton, no no worries about being late. You can always go back and watch, or you can just like get shit done now, right? So thanks for joining uh, in the first place. Ken Bell, MC, what's up? Thanks for joining us today. Mark Tulgren, who else we got? Eve Hanmore, uh, different eyeballs from Rick Cowger. <laughs> Uh, back up. Uh, just, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, you know, stop being scared and get out there. Um, uh, let's, let's, let's figure out the best way to look at this. You know, you, you, you don't just stop being scared. Uh, uh, you know, fear, as we talked about in yesterday's art talk is, is always going to be present in your life in some, in some capacity, but like a movie, uh, and all movies are based on the same structure. We talked about that in three acts. And at the end of the second act, is all is lost. It's your your fear has crushed you, has destroyed you. It could be the Avengers where everything's lost and the world is exploded. You know, time travel. Hello. You know, something happens. It's all a dream. That's the big joke in in the film industry. If you can't think of an answer, oh, it was just a dream, right? You know, and that's that's the com first compartment that you had. But uh, my point is that when you can overcome fear in some capacity, then you're exhibiting courage. And that's really our journey as human beings is to, to, um, uh, to assemble uh, apes together strong, right? Not apes present, present pre, 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 apes social distancing. That's not how it works. So, you know, the world has figured out a way for us to stay away from each other for the, for the time being. But honestly, we're really not because uh, uh, on a spiritual level, we are all interconnected. Uh, I am as much connected to you guys as I am to the phone that I'm looking at right here and my cup of coffee, which is quite delicious this morning. David Cashin, 
looks like a uh, McLaren maybe, a uh, Lamborghini for your icon there. I'm not sure. I know it's red. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, so, you know, uh, stop being scared. Uh, the way that we, we cope with things, the way we cope with fear is uh, getting our ass off the chair and getting busy, right? Getting busy doing things that are productive in some way. Now, if you're not sure what to do, and many people feel trapped in fear, and they, they don't know what to do, or they don't feel they can get up. Um, and um, the thing to do there is to meditate and look for an opportunity. Uh, it's just to wait. Wait until you get inspired. A time to reinvent and prepare for a great comeback. That's right. That's exactly what we're doing, uh, MC. So um, uh, the way can we, that we can cope with fear today is to get out there. Get out there. Now, I'm not saying, uh, because we have so many people out there that are saying, Stay at home. It's safer at home. Don't go outside. Uh, I'm not, unfortunately, I'm not one of those people that are going to tell you to do that. You're going to get that in a lot of different, different places, different ways. And uh, uh, I'm going to, I'm just going to say that here's an opportunity. I'm not saying that you need to get out and go to the store. You need to go and go to a car show where there's no people. You need to go to a Walmart or a Costco or any other places that you guys go to get your stuff. What I am saying is don't let fear stop you from living your life. You have an opportunity here uh, for the next uh, two weeks, two months, you know, however long this lasts. Um, in, in many ways, you kind of want it to last so that you can prepare your new business or your new project. Uh, and it may be difficult for some of you financially to be able to do some of these things, um, but you gotta have faith. You gotta have faith and you gotta have trust that things are gonna work out and, um, and that our government is going to solve the problem. Uh, you can solve the problem for yourself on a daily basis. Okay, so that's what I'm. Uh, I'm kind of uh, digging in deep here to, today to try to get you guys to understand that um, you you can't. For today, you can't let fear stop you from doing the things that you're going to do. Kathy and I are going to go take a hike today. Uh, we are are going to go where we know there's not a lot of people. And we're going to go and experience the joy of being outdoors and the beauty of, of uh, nature and everything else. It's something that we enjoy. Now, some of you um, may just go into your garage and, and get busy. You may go into your backyard and do some of the things that you haven't had a chance to do. Uh, but uh, this is an opportunity because in our life, the way life normally is, uh, a lot of us say, uh, I'm too busy to get to trim those trees. I'm too busy to do this and too busy to do that. Well, uh, now you're not. Now you're not. You're not too busy to do anything. Uh, you can go and scrub the toilet. Don't expect, you're not going to have some, uh, some, if you can afford someone to come over and clean your house, they're probably not coming over. So get busy cleaning yourself. Don't be too much of a prima donna to not be able to go into your own bathroom and clean your own bathroom and or sweep or or uh, pick up your shit. You know, the, you know, don't expect your wife or your husband to pick up your crap and do the laundry. Do it yourself. Get in there get creative. And uh, uh, there's nothing better. This is something I learned from my mom. There's nothing better than picking up after yourself, learning how to, how to cook your own food. If you, if you're, if you, if your wife always cooks something or your, or your husband is always cooking and you never do, well, time to learn, time to learn, get in there and start uh, getting shit done, right? There's no excuse. There's no time that's better than to learn how to do something new. You want to learn French? Now is your opportunity. Oh, I couldn't learn French because, you know, I don't have enough time, you know, or maybe you want to learn Swahili or something like that. You know, what? whatever, things are going to change. An opportunity is going to come where you're going to go to Paris or you're going to go to Australia. And you want to learn Australian. You want to you want to be able to talk like the Aussies do. You know what I'm saying, right? Uh, so I practiced that a little bit. That wasn't really great. It wasn't good on you, mate. You know, I, I can do it sometimes. But I think if I went to Australia, I would I would really get the accent down, like really well. I'm practicing, so that's that's part of my game plan, you know. So uh, uh, also, if you want to go to like um, uh, the south and you want to, yeah, hey, let's. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to start that, you know. Uh, uh, you know what I mean. You get my my drift. Is that if you if you if you've always wanted to do something, and you haven't done it then now's your time. Now's your chance. If you want, yeah, let's say that uh, uh, there's something you want to do, but you can't really do it right now. It's like you can't learn how to fly a hel helicopter, right? Uh, but there's still a lot of things that you can do. There's books, there's all kinds of things, simulations, there's things online, there's things you can do to immerse yourself into that thing that you want to do, okay? So uh, 
Uh, Christine, I don't know what wee wee means, but if you got to get going, you got to go do your business, then come on back. Uh, Rick, uh, after our talk, I'm going to help my folks clean out their flower beds, put mulch down, get my mom's flower bed ready. That's great. That's awesome. In fact, uh, if I was there with you, I'd be doing the same thing because I love gardening. I think it's cool, especially because uh, you clean it all up and then you get tomatoes and you get vegetables and all kinds of good stuff. Cynthia, uh, we, we, the people have to start peeing. I don't know. Uh, maybe you guys should watch our talk in the bathroom and that way you don't have to leave. Uh, Fetench, French. I don't know. I don't know what that means, Christine. So we're moving on. <laughs> um, I'm not saying that you need to go out to a car show. Uh, there aren't any. Uh, I'm not saying that you need to go and, and hang out where there's a, uh, a group of people. Um, but wherever you do, wherever you live, there is beauty around you. I don't care if you're uh, in the middle of uh, downtown LA. You know there is beauty around you, uh, and you need to go experience it as 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 much as you possibly can. Because when things change, you're you're not going to have the opportunity to do things in the same way that you you do them now. Now, Kathy and I went to uh, Zuma Beach yesterday, the second time. We went the day before, also a little bit earlier. But we went around ten o'clock at Zuma Beach. Okay. And uh, if you, those of you who are not familiar with Zuma, it's about a three mile long beach that is generally populated with um, uh, ridiculous amounts of people. I mean, it's like, it's like absolutely nuts. Well, we packed a, a, a peanut butter sandwich and uh, we, we went and parked and then we walked out to the beach and we were there for about an hour and a half and we sat on the beach and ate and, and uh, talked and uh, had a great time, we did not see one single person. Not one single person. Now that was an opportunity to cherish because we will never get that opportunity again, of course, unless we go today or tomorrow, you know. Uh, but it's gonna change, it's gonna change. Yes, Zuma is gorgeous, absolutely. And uh, French plus ranch is French. Okay, creativity, <laughs> I love it. You said learn French. Ah, oui, oui, hell cut the ho ho. Very much. Yeah, I have a haircut. Did you get a haircut? I don't know. I'm a lot faster. I move a lot faster when I when my hair's cut. There's less drag, you know. I'm not in drag. There's less drag. My gratification comes from seeing their faces, says Rick, and knowing that they're happy and I can put a smile on their face. Yeah, absolutely. Now, that's giving in its truest sense. I'm holding my co cup of coffee and I'm not drinking. Hold on. It's getting cold. Come on, people. Take advantage of being outside. Notice, um, notice what we've been missing, and that that uh, that uh, uh, that process um, uh, encourages encourages you to be grateful. And the the big answer here, if uh, if our uh, uh, political system, if our uh, if our government, if uh, people in power in some way could begin to um, exhibit more gratitude towards uh, the people that work around uh, less criticism, uh, the world could be a, a significantly different place. But we can't expect them to do that. They're not gonna do that. We can't criticize them for not doing it because that only hurts us, right? The best thing that we can do to make a change in the world is for us to practice gratitude ourselves. The great outdoors is a simple beauty to behold. Yes, absolutely, Cynthia. And, uh, and I know that you guys know this, but I'm not trying to get you guys to do this, really. I'm trying to get you guys to share this idea with anybody you come across with today. Now, some of you may get off of Art Talk and then get on a phone call with somebody or email or something like that. I want you to share this. I want you to, to share this idea that now is, is not the time to be scared. Now is the time to be uh, in go mode. Now is the time to take advantage of this time and start your business, start your projects, clean out your, your closet, uh, do some gardening, improve your life somehow, uh, to meditate, do some things that will help improve yourself as a human being so that when we come out of this, we can say, well, that was, that was an experience. And um, for some people, uh, uh, they didn't make it through, and, uh, which is a very small portion of people here. Yeah. We have to get some perspective on this. You know, the last thing from the CDC was that a thousand people have perished. Um, that's true. And that's not, that's not good. That's not, you know, it's not a small number, but it's in relative, relative speaking, uh, Malibu has uh, 10,000 people in it. So it's one tenth of this tiny little town on the West Coast. So we have to get some perspective about the, the fact that it's not taking over the world. It's not going to be taking over the world. Um, 
So, and the more that you can spend your time uh, cultivating gratitude, uh, the the less of an opportunity uh, that there is for the nastiness to come in and uh, uh, and take a hold of you. It's not going to. It's not going to. Uh, you have an opportunity to improve yourself, you to practice peace, not distancing, right? Practice distancing for respect for others. You know, uh, there are people out there that are afraid. So do social distancing uh, in respect to them. But don't do it from the standpoint that you are afraid. Think about, you know, I'm going to give people space. I'm going to give people space today. And, and that's important because uh, the, what they, they don't need is they don't need fear. And they don't need you walking up to them and making them feel uncomfortable. So give them some space, uh, but practice peace today. Practice getting out there and doing some some things that are going to help to improve yourselves. Um, Cynthia, the dogs have to go wee-wee. They're so demanding. Thanks for being you and enjoy your hike today. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, enjoy yourself today as well and give your doggies a pet and some kisses. Um, if you practice uh, the reverse of social distancing, as in uh, respect to others uh, in, in this time, um, you're going to begin to cultivate connection, cultivate connection to source. And that's what I want you guys to think about, is that, uh, that everything you do today either pulls you from source or puts you in touch with source. I want you to stay in touch with source today. So uh, you do that by cultivating love. You cu do that by cultivating gratitude. You do that by cultivating uh, peace and your, your superpower, your ability to choose. Okay? All right? So that's what I got for you today on, on our talk, episode 257. 257. Wow. Wow. I'm going to cheers to that. Cheers to you guys. Have some coffee today. Tea or a milkshake. Whatever you want. You have free reign to do whatever you want today. But I do ask uh, if uh, if this is something of value, I hope that you guys will consider sharing it on Facebook uh, or anywhere else, at least letting people know. We do have uh, new people coming in from time to time. And I hope that this is of benefit to you guys to go out today and to make a difference in your lives uh, by uh, practicing peace and uh, and love in the, uh, the best ways that you can, okay? And pick up a coloring book because 10% of proceeds goes to dog rescues, Mustangs, vets. Uh, check out the books on Amazon, uh, Fireball Coloring Books. And uh, we will see you guys uh, tomorrow on Art Talk. I believe that uh, we still have some, some of the week left. So let's get to it. Adios, Riholis. Woohoo!